You're watching ABC 7 News at 7. No one's excited. Nobody's happy. This is not what, what was expected, and it's not what, what we really thought was going to happen. Venice football coach John Peacock has been fired. How does a coach who led his team to a state championship get fired? Well, he liked an offensive tweet made about a rival football coach on the Suncoast. What's next for the team? Good evening, everyone. I'm Alan Cohn, and welcome to ABC 7 at 7. We'll have more on the firing of the Venice football coach in a moment, but first, our top seven stories at 7. And we begin tonight with the search for a killer in Bradenton. It happened in the 2100 block of 45th Street Court East. Deputies say a neighbor was driving to work when he knew the 62-year-old Robert McCarthy's front door was open. He stopped to look and found McCarthy dead. Deputies say there was obvious trauma to his body. We're just starting to develop this case right now, so really we don't have a person of interest right now. We need anyone that may have seen something suspicious in this neighborhood early this morning to give us a call. Deputies say the community is not in any danger tonight that McCarthy appears to have been targeted. Sign of the time, Sarasota police officers responding after reports of shots fired near St. Martha's School. The call came in around 3 o'clock this afternoon. The school was placed on lockdown. It turns out it was the backfire from a motorcycle. Sarasota County Sheriff's deputies arresting a man after he showed up to a restaurant drive through with a gun. The video on your screen shows the helicopter chasing Drake Jenkins last night. He was arrested shortly after. Deputies say earlier in the day, Jenkins allegedly walked up to the drive through window of a Wendy's on South Tamiami Trail wearing latex gloves and holding a gun. Jenkins is charged with loitering and prowling improper exhibition of a firearm and carrying an unlicensed concealed firearm. A Sarasota child abuse case has prompted the national group to propose a controversial law in Florida. Having kids is the name of the group and it wants Governor Rick Scott to issue an order preventing ch convicted child abusers from reproducing during their probation. But the constitutional lawyer, Andrea Flynn Morganson, says it's not that simple. In all sorts of other cases, the U.S. Supreme Court has repeatedly said that our right to privacy, uh, to be free from government interference in our decisions whether to have and bear children is one of our most fundamental rights. Having Kids says an order like this will prevent the children who survive from a life-saving failing system where they are statistically set up to fail. A Venice attorney has been found guilty of defrauding his clients. Adam Miller practiced in Venice for years but now could be sentenced to prison for stealing from clients who trusted him with their money. The money was set up in attorney trust funds. Prosecutors say Miller transferred money that wasn't his from the trust fund to his own personal bank accounts. Some estimate it could be in the millions. He did so by writing checks and making cash withdrawals from his own trust accounts in those banks and then deposited the funds in his own accounts within the same banks. Miller's father was convicted of a similar crime in 2011. He served four years in prison. Adam Miller faces up to 12 years. His sentencing hearing is set for July. A day after a federal appeals court sided with the state in a legal battle about felons' voting rights, Al Sharpton and other religious and civil rights leaders marched to the state capitol and held a rally. More than 100 activists gathered outside the state capitol in support of a proposed Amendment 4 if approved by Florida voters this fall the amendment could allow convicted felons who have served their time and paid restitution to automatically have voting rights restored. Florida will be ground zero for us to turn around this affront on voting rights for ex-felons. We gonna turn on the light in the sunshine state. When you get out after you paid your debt to society and you're trying to get a job and pay for the light bill, get a roof over your children's head, put food on the table. It impedes your ability to get a job. A panel of the 11th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals last night blocked a federal judge's order requiring state officials to overhaul the Florida process for restoring felons' voting rights by today. The Broward County Sheriff is facing criticism for his handling of the deadly school shooting in Parkland 
from his own men. The Broward County Sheriff's Deputies Association overwhelmingly voted no confidence in Sheriff Scott Israel, although the result is largely symbolic. The head of the deputies union says Sheriff Israel has refused to take responsibility and department morale has been crushed. Now let's head over to ABC 7's Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan with the first alert forecast. Bob. Thanks, Alan. Appreciate it. Casey Key webcam showing clear skies uh, for the beaches today. Nice blue water there. Perfect beach weather has been nice, hasn't it, for the past several days now. Doesn't get much better than that. And it looks like a beautiful sunset expected to take shape here. We have a few clouds out there in the Gulf of Mexico, which will uh, add to that sunset, I do believe. The low pressure area we talked about earlier continues to head off to the northeast right now. It's a little low. It's not all that intense. And as I said, it will continue to move off in this direction. It will take a lot of the energy with it. The trailing cold front behind it, not much to it. You can see the extent of it down through Georgia. That front not doing a whole lot as it enters into the Gulf of Mexico. However, it will continue to move off to the southeast on Friday. It should be overhead uh, just after noon and bring with it a chance for a few passing showers, if any at all. There's not a lot of moisture. There's just not a lot of lift, not a lot of lift with that uh, front. You can see one or two lone showers breaking out uh, even in through Friday evening, uh, but then the whole thing kind of settles to the south uh, just in time for the weekend. 74 degrees. It's nice out there. The dew point is low and the winds out of the west at 7. The pressure 2992. That's known as standard pressure. Standard pressure. All right, not high, not low. It's right there. Uh, 74 Sarasota current temp, 80 in Jacksonville, 81 in Orlando. And that high pressure ridge, which had been dominating our weather, is slowly sinking away as that front approaches. So that's not going to be a big factor for our weather. In mild conditions, though, anticipated even behind the front, it's not going to be all that cold uh, as that high gives way to that weak frontal system. Actually, another high builds in behind it to help our weather out on Saturday and Sunday. Beautiful weekend. Busy time to be a weatherman in Florida. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Sit back. Well, we're getting prepared for the hurricane. Okay, just uh, all the hurricane seminars and everything else that's going on. All right. Thanks a lot, Bob. Right. And still to come, should a high school football coach who just led his team to a state championship be fired over liking a tweet someone called as a racist? Northland Outdoors is about so much more than the biggest fish or the hottest hunting spots. All across the Northland, there are amazing people with incredible stories to tell. We're going to find those stories and share them with everyone. Join us each and every week as we explore the Northland and experience some of the most exciting outdoor adventures in the country right here in our own backyard. This is Northland Outdoors. Outdoor living is one of the greatest perks about living in Florida. So whether this is your style, or this, or maybe this, contact Superior Pools. They've been building pools from Sarasota to Naples since 2001, and they would love to build yours. A decade of war has taken an unprecedented toll on our men and women in uniform. Hundreds of thousands of our veterans are suffering from the trauma of war. At Justice for Vets, we believe that every veteran should have the opportunity for treatment, and restoration. Get involved and go to justiceforvets.org. Help put treatment within reach of veterans in crisis. Veterans fought for our freedom. Now it's our turn to fight for theirs. All hands on deck. What's up? I want to point out three tips for using the home computer more safely. Point away. First, stop. Make sure your software is up to date and that you've password protected your computer's login and Wi-Fi connection. Next, think before visiting a site, opening attachments, or clicking on links. Then connect, knowing you're helping make the web safer for you and for everyone. Make Stop, Think, Connect part of your daily online routine. Whee! Meet Blue. Blue's not feeling well. The prescription? Generic medication. Blue wonders, do they really work as well as name brands? Yes, generics and name brand medications do work the same. Even though they may look different, generics have the same key ingredients. FDA approval is equally rigorous for generics to make sure they're as safe and effective as name brands. And Blue even saves some green, making him a little less, well, blue. Talk to your doctor about generics and visit FDA.gov slash generic drugs. Download the all-new ABC7 First Alert weather app now. Outdoor living is one of the greatest perks about living in Florida. So whether this is your style, or this, or maybe this, 
Contact Superior Pools. They've been building pools from Sarasota to Naples since 2001, and they would love to build yours. Wow, four months after winning a state championship, Venice High School head football coach is out. Fired not because of what he tweeted, but because of what one of his players tweeted and he liked. ABC 7's Dwayne Lindo joins us with more. Dwayne. Well, Alan, it's an interesting series of events. Of course, the firing of a coach after you win a state championship is something you don't see often. But the principal of the school says it's had to be done. Fresh off a state championship, graduating senior Jesse Grimes is not celebrating anymore. It was kind of like a let down feeling, honestly. And according to athletic director Pete Dombrowski, the events that have unfolded are a shock for the Venice community. No one's excited, nobody's happy. This is not what, what was expected and it's not what, what we really thought was going to happen. The firing stems from a social media post from a Venice player that Coach Peacock liked. The post was directed at Braden River High School coach Kurt Bradley and included a spray tan bottle. Bradley wrote an email to Peacock and copied the Manatee and Sarasota school districts regarding the racial overtones in the post. Peacock says in a statement that he liked the tweet because he thought this to be a joke about Bradley using spray tan and had no clue that the Braden River coach was multiracial. Dombrowski calling the liking of the tweet a misunderstanding. John's not a racist. John's never been racist. John's never been accused here of being racist. I've known him, coached with him, taught with him. There's no doubt in my mind that that rumor flying around is so untrue. Peacock also went on to say that I'm appalled at Coach Bradley's desperate attempt to exploit today's racial tension to the disgrace he has brought to his program, referring to the program's reprimand by the FHSAA due to illegal football practices prior to the start of the spring football season. But Venice's principal, Eric Jackson, told us off camera it was a culmination of events that led to the decision of firing Peacock and ultimately wanted to go into a different direction in regards to the program. In 2010, Venice was forced to forfeit the 2009 season, including a district championship, for the violation of numerous FHSAA policies. It was all of us. It was an athletic department. It was an oversight. It was... Um... Something, it was just an unfortunate incident of policy and procedure that we've corrected and uh, fixed it, and everything's been fine since. So. Bill Buck Chevrolet in Venice are the signature sponsors. Monty Jacobs, representing the sponsor, says he still supports Peacock and the program. I'm not judge or jury. Um, I guess I'm an involved party because I support the program, and I think that I support John, but also I support the Venice community, and I support Venice High School, and this football program is going to move forward, and Bill Buck Chevrolet is going to move forward with it. And as the program moves forward, Coach Larry Shannon will be the interim head coach for the spring season. The school will then examine where they are and make a decision on its next head football coach. Um, they're a great group of uh, coaches that John has brought together and we feel very comfortable with them out there and uh, good hands and we'll get through the spring and once spring is done see where it leads us. Now Alan we did reach out to Brain River head coach Kurt Bradley for a statement but he was instructed by the district not to comment. Dwayne thanks a lot in a moment one of key coach Peacock's friends and why even liking a tweet can put you into real legal jeopardy the trapezoid is next. You want a Maserati, but you need an SUV. Why not have both? Levante, the Maserati of SUVs. Experience it today at Sunset Maserati, Alfa Romeo of Sarasota. When my youngest, Addie, was two and a half, she was diagnosed with leukemia. When we first heard that diagnosis, you feel extremely alone. Walking in that light the night light with 6,000 people carrying lights, white for survivors, red for supporters, gold in memory of those who have passed. It's the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society's hope that every year there are fewer gold lanterns. Your lantern will make a difference. Start a team, join a team. Help us light the night.
Every time you purchase a fishing license or register your boat, you're helping to preserve our nation's coastlines, lakes, rivers, and streams, protecting memories for generations to come. Learn how your participation in boating and fishing can help the environment at takemefishing.org slash conservation. Hamilton was adopted from a rescue in 2008. He really likes to be around people. And as soon as I start to make my breakfast, Hamilton is right there. I get out my mat and I'm doing a downward dog and he's underneath. He's quite the pug about town. He gets invited to a lot of parties. He knows he's a pretty big deal. I mean, look at this little face. How do you not love him? Looking for something fun to do on a Friday night? Then come to Music on Main, the first Friday of every month at Lakewood Ranch. Enjoy free live music, dancing, great food, and lots of fun for every family member, even the furry ones. Meet up with friends, enjoy activities for the kids, or make it a special date night. And be sure to stop by the ABC7 booth and say hello. Mark your calendars for Music on Main, first Friday of the month, 6 to 9 at Lakewood Ranch. Brought to you by ABC7 and B sponsors. Welcome back from the thrill of victory to the agony of the unemployment line. In December, head coach John Peacock led his Venice High School football team to the promised land, the Class 7A State Football Championship. Four months later, he's out, fired, not for what he tweeted, but for rather for what he a tweet that he liked by one of his players who posted a racially insensitive picture in reference to a rival coach, Raiden Rivers' Kurt Bradley. The reality is, folks, as we are about to learn, liking a tweet can have real legal implications. And joining us for more are Damon Wilson, an assistant coach and the friend of Coach Peacock, ABC7 reporter Dwayne Lindo. And joining us by Skype from Washington is Susan Nylon. Welcome to you all. And uh, Coach Damon, you know, Coach Peacock is a good friend of yours. Yes. And Obviously, the, the photograph that he liked was in very poor taste. Mm -hmm. What has the coach told you about what happened when he liked that picture? We, we had brief discussions about the picture and, and what he said, what he, you know, about liking it. But I, I just want to make a point, you know, liking that was not a smart thing for him to do. But I've known Coach Peacock since 1993 when we were at East, East, East Carolina together. You were roommates, right? We were, we were roommates. We were, we were, you know, between me, Larry Shannon, all of us, we, we, really, uh, we, we really hit a bond. I moved down here because of those guys, to be around those guys. Coach Peacock was in my wedding, you know. So nothing about Coach Peacock is a racist. He's never been racist. And so I, I, I find it offending, uh, offensive to, for someone to even call him that. And everyone around Venice and the program knows that. Right, we're going to get into that more. But Dwayne, you, you basically reported in your story there was there's a larger picture going on here that uh, you you uh, showed the interview with the the uh, athletic director who said that there were other things going on and this was almost like the final straw. Yeah, I spoke to Venice's principal on the phone. Um, he says that, and I quote, there were a culmination of events that led to this decision. He wouldn't get into the specifics of uh, those events, but the point is he told me that this was uh, kind of a, a part of the decision why they, they fired Coach Peacock. Right, Susan, uh, you know, I had a, used to have a news director who used to love us to use the phrase a cautionary tale here. And that's where yeah. you come in because you have a, a legal background that it's becoming more problematic peop uh, these days for people when they even like something, whether it's on Twitter or Facebook. Well, true, but let me remind everybody that um, liking something on Facebook happens to be protected by the First Amendment. It is you know, freedom of speech. So um, if that was the only reason that he was fired, he'd have a lot to stand on. However, that doesn't keep him from scrutiny, and that's pretty much what happened. And we're seeing people, Susan, get into trouble for what they do in terms of, of liking things on Facebook. I even remember during the presidential campaign, Ted Cruz got into trouble because he liked some pornography on there. And if you are a public figure, you're going to get that kind of attention. Yeah, and some of the problem is is that people can run their cursor over a Facebook like and it automatically acknowledges it and you don't realize it. It also is a problem because in order for you to follow someone, you have to like them as well. 
It doesn't mean that you really do like them. It's just how Facebook acknowledges it, and that's a problem. So people have to be really careful about their image and how it's perceived. Uh, Damon, you you said that you've known uh, Coach Peacock for, yes, for many years mm -hmm. there, but obviously, given what his statement is uh, tonight, uh, there there is been some kind of animosity between these two coaches. And that's good, and that's cool. It's, it's part of sports. That's you know sometimes things like that happen. I, I just don't know when liking a picture of a lotion bottle becomes racist. That's the point. You know, if you're going to tell me that it was something else, uh, then, then let it be that, but, but not liking a picture of a lotion bottle. Okay. That, that just shouldn't, shouldn't happen. Okay. Right. Uh, we are just getting warmed up, and we'll have much more right after we check the first alert weather, so stay with us. I used to dread getting up and going to work. I was done with the corporate grind. I was tired of being a starving artist. And I started looking around for a business that I believed in, and I kind of wanted to do something a little more green. My school mentor helped me take the first step. He helped me create a business plan and helped me implement it. They've really taught me how to think big. SCORE helped me to make the unimaginable possible all for free. I'm here because of SCORE. I'm here because of SCORE. Get your free business mentor at SCORE.org. Growing up, my mom was afraid of the water, something she did not want me to feel. So I enrolled Missy in swim lessons. It changed my life. Missy Franklin. And now you can do the same for someone that you love. There's nothing more precious than your child's well-being. So act now before it's too late. Make a splash! I'm glad I did. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> Visit USAswimmingfoundation.org to find, get, or give a swim lesson. Set your course for a waterfront lifestyle on Florida's last private island. Discover One Particular Harbor by Margaritaville. Nearby sugar sand beaches are as easy to find as the warm Florida sunshine. Waterfront residences from the high 400s overlook beautiful Anna Maria Sound. And a new marina with direct access to the Gulf of Mexico. Plus, incredible savings on move-in ready homes. Come tour designer models today. Visit ophmintousa.com now. all across the country. I come from five generations of military men. My dad is still active duty. My grandpa is retired Marines. I like going for runs with my dog. I love, you know, taking her out to the dog beach over in Venice. There are so many things here to do on the Sun Coast. My goal every day when I come into work at ABC7 is to tell your stories, give you that major local news and those details that you really care about. I'm Jacqueline Matter and I'm here for you. Our conversation continues right after we get a check on the first alert forecast with Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. Bob. Thanks, Alan. Beautiful day today. It has been all week long. For the most part, Monday a little different. We had some clouds and showers around then and even into Tuesday morning. But then since that, it's been beautiful. Uh, clear skies for the most part, beautiful uh, afternoons. We had a few clouds move in uh, this evening, but uh, we're not expecting those to stick around very long. A weak front, a weak cold front at that moves down Friday midday, continuing into Friday evening. That front really isn't going to change much in terms of temperatures, but it will bring us a slight chance for a few passing showers. Mild weekend ahead, and pretty nice. So we'll see high pressure build in behind that uh, weak cold front. And then get ready for the heat. It's going to turn up a little bit on Monday through Friday of next week as temperatures will warm up into the upper 80s uh, to near 90 degrees each and every day. Well, here's that frontal boundary. There's the area of low pressure, not much to it. Had a few showers. I noticed the tail end of that front. There's uh, really no rainfall showing up on the radar. Uh, we will see the possibility of some rain, though, as it enters into our weather picture, as I said, later into the afternoon on Friday. Currently, we have a few clouds at 74. The relative humidity, comfortable 68%. Nice breeze out of the west at 7. And the pressure now, 29.92 inches. The high today warmed to 78. Was comfortable out there. This morning's low was right at the average of 63. And here's the European forecast model showing that front at the timing of the day at 10 o'clock in the morning right across north central Florida, producing a thin line of clouds, a few showers if possible with that front. 
it weakens even more so as it heads in our direction sometime after 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And then eventually it kind of fades away as it pushes to the south. Now on Saturday night, we'll have some high clouds streaming on by as the upper level winds become more westerly in time. And then uh, for Sunday, beautiful day on Sunday, lots of sunshine. Uh, we'll have a cool start on Sunday morning, low 60s, and then we'll warm up into the mid 80s by the afternoon. So things looking pretty good, pretty dry. Uh, not a lot going on weather wise. The calm before the uh, big season starts in just over a month. Uh, we're looking for the uh, start of the hurricane season. Uh, here's what's happening right there. A frontal boundary making its way through parts of the central U.S. A little weak cold front there too, but there's not a lot of big storms going on across the U.S. at this point with the exception of the one that moved through the northeast just the past couple of days. That's the same one that brought us the rainfall on Monday and on into a Tuesday morning. Well, this is a different forecast model. This is a GFS showing similar conditions and similar timing uh, with the storms and showers. Any, any time, um, say after 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, we may get a few around here. But all in all, I think most places will stay dry, and we're not expecting a lot of accumulation uh, with that front. And then the ridge of high pressure builds in over the southeast for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Uh, with the next front coming down next Friday as well. You'll see that in the long range models. The blue indicates the cooler air. That's going to start to leave and you'll start to see more reds and uh, oranges showing up and that's uh, warmer temperatures. This is May. This is next Wednesday. And then again, that's Thursday and even into Friday. Things really start to heat up from Texas all the way to the Carolinas. For boaters tomorrow, winds will be nice. Seas are right, right around two feet with a light chop in the bays and inland waters. The extended forecast shapes up like this. Sunshine uh, for us on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, all the way through next week. Now we'll have a little cloudiness, as I said, late in the afternoon, but we should start off sunny. Uh, temperatures staying in the low to mid 60s all the way through the next seven days. Alan will be back with his guests right after this. Stick around. If you're only hungry for a slice of apple pie, why buy the whole pie? And you certainly wouldn't want to pay for an all-you-can-eat buffet. So if you don't use your cell phone that much, why get charged for a plan that's too big or even an unlimited plan? Luckily, there's still a wireless company that shares your values. Welcome to Consumer Cellular. Our average customer pays about $25 a month for everything they need. Many pay even less as plans start at just $15 a month. You'll get a straightforward bill that's easy to understand with no surprises and all the attention you deserve from our friendly customer service team. No wonder Consumer Cellular has received the J.D. Power Award for highest customer service four times in a row. Plus, if you're an AARP member, you'll receive special discounts. It's easy to switch. You can even keep your phone and your number. So stop paying for more than you need and start your 30-day risk-free trial today. Call 800-457-2317, go online, or visit a Target store today. ABC 7, your Suncoast News. We're here for you. Watch ABC 7 wherever you are. On our live stream on mysuncoast.com. On the ABC 7 My Suncoast app. Powered by the I Associates. Providing sight for life. Featuring traffic maps and live radar. Dining with recipes and My Suncoast restaurant guide. Visit mysuncoast.com. Click on the apps tab to download the ABC 7 My Suncoast app for Apple and Android. Each day, researchers make discoveries that bring us closer to the moment when all cancer patients can become survivors. Their progress is made possible with the help of clinical trials. Clinical trials are the brightest torch researchers have to light their way towards better treatments. And if you've been diagnosed with cancer, they may be your brightest ray of hope. Speak with your doctor and visit standuptocancer.org slash clinical trials to learn more. Together, we can stand up for all of us. Welcome back. We're talking about the abrupt firing of Venice High School's football coach just months after winning the state championship and joining us for more are Damon Wilson, an assistant coach and the friend of Coach Peacock. ABC 7 reporter Dwayne Lindo and joining us by Skype from Washington is Susan Nylon. And, and Damon, uh, as 
Dwayne has been reporting, it seems like there were a lot of other things in play here. Was it within the school, or do you, are we talking about you know the, the, the district, the county, or what? I think, well, first of all, I want to clear it up. Assistant coach, I'm not an assistant right. coach. I'm not with the staff there. But, but you coach other, I, other football. Right, teams. Pop Warner, right. I, and, right. I, and I volunteer. But I, I definitely believe that this is more um, from the top not not at the level at the high school level but why would that be because I, I tell you in any county you could go to in florida they want you know a, a football I, team to reach the state championship well, let alone win it i can answer that i i and, and this is the part if you don't know coach peacock if you don't know who he is if you don't know he's an introvert if you don't know he doesn't like to talk you might get the wrong impression of him but don't hold that against him when you start talking about and throwing out things uh, like being racist. But that 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 can that's that that can carry on. That, that's going to be a wake that will follow him for a long time. Don't do that to him. But if you say, "Hey, look, you know what? You know, you, you, you don't you're not going to talk to us very long. You're not going to hold conversations very long. You're not you're not going to meet with uh, kids for two three hours. Then do then then say that." But don't say it because, you know, it's, don't say you're racist. Dwayne, I, I don't think many people or most people who watch this understand uh, the, the, the politics and the rivalry that goes on at these high schools around the, the Sun Coast or anywhere in Florida, no matter what the sport is, whether it's football or baseball or, or basketball or whatever, and that the relationship in, between the coaches sometimes gets really heated. Let right. alone the players. Oh, right. And uh, for those who don't know, uh, both these schools are in the same district. And these two schools go head to head every year and fight for a position in the postseason to go to try to, you know, make it to state. So we've been seeing this for the past three or four years. So, like you said, this is a heated rivalry. But I got to, I have to mention that both these coaches, Coach Bradley and Coach Peacock, they do. Uh, an immense amount of work for their community and for these kids. Do they do a great job representing the community? Um, unfortunately, you know this is an unfortunate incident. But again, both these squads go head to head every year, so it's it's a huge rivalry. Susan, obviously there was a lot going on here, but we also live at a time uh, when you know whether we're talking about the NFL. Well, we're talking about other mm -hmm. things in our culture right now. There is a, a real uh, racial sensitivity going on about with people, whether they say or do or tweet or share the wrong thing. Yeah, I agree. I go back to your original statement is that it's a cautionary tale. First of all, I think it's really difficult for teachers in general to share Facebook um, groups with their students. It's really, really risky. And if I was teaching again, I would not do that um, because you're left to the, uh, your activity is left up to the interpretation of however it's perceived. Um, and there is a really big question about whether or not Coach Peacock understood the post as a racial post. I mean, there's a, there's a large opportunity that he didn't. Even if it was intended that way, sometimes we always don't perceive it to be that way. So um, it's a real shame. And I happen to agree with what was said earlier. You know, if this gentleman has a really good career, you can't leave it hanging on the fact that he's a racist just because he liked to post. Um, there has to be something more to substantiate it. Well, now it's going to be out there. It's, it's in the press. Um, in this day and age, uh, once it's on the Internet, it stays on the Internet, and which I would imagine would make it more difficult to get another coaching job. Uh, you know, Damon, what is uh, Coach Peacock thinking right now in terms of his future, in terms of being a football it, coach in it, Florida? I, I'm going to do my best to hold it together, but I met with him earlier today, and he's hurting. You know, you, you know toothpaste is out the tube, and, and, and it's not because of he's that type of person. You know, you, you, if you were to go back and the Trey Burtons of the world winning Super Bowls, that kid will tell you that Coach Peacock was a father figure. Clay Burton is going to say the same thing. Dre Archer, when Dre Archer was having problems at Kent, no one knows this. Coach Peacock called me and said, hey, I need you to help him out. We stayed on the phone with that, that kid every day for three, four weeks. Just say, hey, stay in school, stay in school. When, when, when a kid needed a car in Laurel, Coach Peacock took his truck there and dropped it off and said, here, you, you get this. And this kid was 22, 23 years old. 
trying to make it, and Coach knew that, and said, hey, look, I, I'm going to give you this car. See, we don't hear those stories. We want to leave all this stuff about being racist and leave it out. And, and, and that's frustrating to me. Dwayne, we should also know we did reach out to the county athletic director to take part in the story tonight, and uh, they could not do that. But I, uh, on the other hand, in this day and age, with, especially with your players uh, tweeting and posting on Instagram, wherever, coaches have to monitor what their kids are doing because kids you know as you we often know left to their own devices say and do stupid things look i mean this is something that's that's normal where you have coaches whether it's twitter or facebook coaches follow their players and vice versa so this is it's it's normal even uh college coaches they'll follow follow kids that they're recruiting um uh kids that that uh play for them we so and this is not this is normal this is not like it's an, an anomaly that uh the the kids were or coach peacock was uh following a lot of his players it happens all the time and, and susan you said that at this point that coaches really have to be very careful about liking or commenting on social media in response to what one of their players say, but you know what, uh, I, you know, let's say that there was a posting that was very complimentary, uh, maybe a, you know, a uh, an attachment from a, a newspaper article um, about a particular player. I could see how coaches will want to at least like it. I guess the question might be where the where the line is. Yeah, I I, I understand that it's quite common that coaches and teachers follow their students and their players that's not out of the ordinary but participating interacting that's a really hard line a teacher has a rough time even in the classroom of what's appropriate and what's inappropriate the fact that you can't be alone in the in a school room with a te i mean with a student and you have to notify somebody else is an indication of what it's like on a day-to-day -day basis Social media is not much different, especially if you have a parent looking or you have another child who just doesn't quite understand what you're liking. I mean, it's again, it's just left up to the interpretation. If you want to take that chance, go right ahead. But here you are. Look, look where Coach Peacock is. Uh, Damon, what I is Coach? I bet five dollars he wouldn't do it again. <laughs> Damon, I think that's fair, fair to say. But what, uh, what? is Coach Peacock thinking right now in terms of what can he do? Are there any legal options that he has? I, I think he needs to fight like his life depends on it. His livelihood depends on it. His family depends on it. And, you know, how he feeds and takes care of his household. I think a lot of who he is is, is put and wrapped up into giving back to that school, that community, that football team. There's too much good that's come out of that. And, you know, I, I, right now, my advice and, 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 and hopefully the advice of others is no matter what happens, you need to expose anything else out there that has taken, on, taken place. It needs to be brought to light because I guarantee you if he digs his heels in and he fights, things will come out. I guarantee you that. And, and Dwayne, you've been at it for the last 24 hours and trying to talk to as many coaches as possible. It's actually difficult to get people to, to talk about what happened here because they're afraid of what? Well, it's a sensitive subject. I mean, that's that's the thing. You know, uh, coaches uh, are, you know, a, a lot of the area coaches, I got have to say, are, are great with the community, great with the kids, great role, role models. Um, this is something that it's, it's sensitive, like I said. And again, not a lot of coaches want to really dive into uh, this topic because it's it, it can become controversial. Susan, we only have a few seconds left, but what is that your takeaway from this? <laughs> um, I still go back to the cautionary tale that we have to be really careful how we interact on Facebook and recognize the fact that the world is watching and the world can be interpreting in a different way that you intended. Okay. Thank you all. Before we go, we want to share with you what some of you had to say about last night's show about the drama taking place at the Manatee County School Board back in February. An altercation between Chairman Scott Hopes and board member Dave Miner took place. Hopes claims he was almost hit by a car driven by Miner, then allegedly made a comment to police about having a gun in his own vehicle. A call for the re-election of the chair and the vice chair took place shortly after the altercation. We went to Facebook to hear your thoughts, and Sam says both Manatee and Sarasota need completely new school board members and administrations. Kenneth says, been in Bradenton for 35 years, same joke, different day. Well, 
you'd like to join the conversation on tonight's topic, just visit our Facebook page at facebook.com slash mysuncoast.com.abc7. And FYI, you can watch past discussions on demand. They're available on Apple TV, Amazon Fire, and Roku. We want to thank our guests for being here tonight. Damon Wilson is an assistant coach and a friend of Coach Peacock, ABC7 reporter Dwayne Lindo, and joining us by Skype from Washington, Susan Nylon. When we return, USF Sarasota Manatee economics instructor Michael Snipes will join us to discuss the unemployment rate and how it's actually calculated. Stick around. You want a Maserati, but you need an SUV. Why not have both? Levante, the Maserati of SUVs. Experience it today at Sunset Maserati, Alfa Romeo of Sarasota. Dear parents, it's time for a pop quiz. What's the best kind of play for kids? Play that makes us think? Or helps us pretend? Or teaches us rules? Or to be creative? Actually, every kind of play is important because different kinds of play give us different kinds of skills. Help us mix up the ways we play. Okay, class dismissed, now go play. I'll be right back. Hi, you think you're probably sober? Yeah. But you're thinking about taking the back roads home, just in case. If you're probably sober, then why would you do that? Good choice. Probably okay isn't okay. If you see a warning sign, stop and call a cab, a car, or a friend. That's a full glass of wine. I'll be chatting you later. Thanks to the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, what was once impossible is happening today for thousands of patients with blood cancer. I live. I live. I live. I live. I live. She lives. Because of the research done by the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society in the battle against blood cancer. If you had a chance to support the research that is saving lives, what would you do? Check out My Suncoast Dining on MySuncoast.com, your guide to the foodie lifestyle. ABC7's own Chef Judy serves up her favorite recipes, cooking tips and trends, dining blog, step-by-step -step videos, and Suncoast Restaurant Guide. You'll find it all at MySuncoast.com slash dining. Every month we hear the unemployment numbers. We're told they're good, but what does that really mean? Joining us is Michael Snipes, an economics instructor at Sarasota Manatee and Sarasota. Um to explain it all to us. Sure, and so the, the unemployment rate is one of those big macroeconomic variables that you hear a lot about, but it's measured in a very specific way and that can have implications for what it's actually telling us. So the way it works is the Bureau of Labor Statistics will go out and they'll conduct surveys. And based upon the answers that people give, they'll get placed into one of three categories. And the first two categories are, you'll be counted as either employed basically meaning you have a job in the traditional sense, or you'll be counted as unemployed, right? And one of the key things that we need to know about being counted as unemployed is you have to be actively looking for a job. But there's actually a third category that people can get put into, which is what we call not in the labor force, right? And so these are individuals who don't have a job but aren't actively looking. So these are retirees, children, and more importantly for our discussion, people known as discouraged workers. So workers who have given up on trying to find a job. And so the unemployment rate is not based on population, it's based on what we call the labor force, which is the employed versus unemployed individuals. And it's just the proportion of unemployed divided by the labor force. So what does this mean? So let's say that we have five individuals who are employed, five individuals who are unemployed. So that means our labor force is 10 individuals. And of those 10 individuals, five are unemployed. So that means that we have a 50% unemployment rate. So this is a really bad economy. So let's say that one of those workers who is unemployed decides that the economy is so bad that they just stop looking for a job. How does that change things? Well, the way that changes is what now happens is one of these workers now becomes 
a discouraged worker. They leave the labor force. So what that means is now we have five individuals who are employed, and we have now four individuals who are unemployed. So what does that mean is the unemployment rate? Well, what that means is now we've got four unemployed individuals, and our labor force is nine. And what that means is we've now got an unemployment rate of 44%. And I couldn't reach there, but that's, that's a 44, right? And, and that's kind of the point. When we were thinking about what these big macroeconomic indicators actually tell us, we need to be careful as to what exactly they're telling us, because a decrease in the unemployment rate might actually be a sign that things are bad. I am not only impressed with the information, I'm impressed that every week you come in here and you're just a little bit more high tech. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. this is uh, not only magnetic, you can write on it. We had so. math tonight, which is really impressive. Michael, thank you very much. Michael Snipes joins us every, every Thursday to discuss the world of economics. When we return, we'll have a final look at your first alert weather. Plus, the verdict is in in the Bill Cosby trial. Will the man once known as America's dad head to prison? Stay with us. Hi, I'm Holly Robinson-Pete. And I'm Rodney Pete. And after 16 years in the NFL, it came as no surprise that knee surgery might be in my future. And when the doctor said Rodney needed to lose weight before surgery, we knew that Lipazine could help him lose four times more weight. It's America's number one weight loss supplement. I've already lost 30 pounds and four pant sizes. I didn't need a prescription or meal plan. I've lost 10 pounds, I have more energy, more stamina. We eat our favorite foods and still lose four times more weight. I'm very impressed with Rodney's weight loss. His blood pressure and cholesterol have really improved. I recommend Lipazine because it's made from the rare konjac root, which contains glucomannan, a very safe and effective weight loss supplement. Lipazine has no harmful side effects. No caffeine, no jitters, no counting calories. No cleanses. No starved diets. No boot camps. Nothing in your lifestyle needs to change. Just add Lipazine. In a clinical study, people were not asked to change their lifestyle and simply add Lipazine. As a result, they lost not just twice the weight, not three times, but they lost four times more weight just by adding Lipazine. And 78% of that weight loss was fat, not water, but fat. Rodney and I guarantee that you will lose weight or your money back. Can we say that? Yep, guaranteed or your money back. So get Lipazine and lose four times more weight. Now you can lose four times more weight. Just add Lipazine for only $29.95. Call right now and we'll double your order for free and ship it free too. And for a limited time, we'll double the size of each bottle for free. So now you have four times the Lipazine for just $29.95. Plus, you'll get MetaboUp Plus to help boost your energy and metabolism. But you must call. Call 800-379-2824. 800-379-2824. Eight hundred three seven nine twenty eight twenty four. Your primetime headlines are coming up in a moment, but right now let's get a final check on the first alert forecast with Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. Thanks, Alan. You know, we had a beautiful week thus far. It's not going to be spoiled by this frontal system. It is coming our way, but it's just going to bring a few showers around. We had high pressure that was situated here all week long. Just beautiful weather, lots of blue skies. And then what happened is, is this high has been bumped off to the east and it's weakened. It's pretty much gone now. It's not uh, sticking around 29.91 on the barometer, which is not all that high. And we have a little bit of an old frontal boundary down to our south. That's going to stay there. Not a concern right now to us at all. Uh, this front is uh, somewhat of a concern in terms of a few showers. That's it. Uh, temperatures behind it, not all that cooler. And 74 degrees right now. Humidity is nice out there. What a beautiful evening. West wind at 7 and the barometer 29.92 now. So it's gone up one point. But not much and you, we should see begin to see clearing skies uh, through the rest of the night and that will allow us to see Venus. You'll see that looking out in the western sky and it should be uh, quite spectacular. They're quite bright to uh, 78 degrees now uh, as far as our high goes today. That was a few degrees below the average, which is normally at 82 degrees. We'll be close to 82 tomorrow uh, despite the front. Uh, you can see it coming down the marching down the state right there and that rain stained well down to our south. The keys may get a little bit more rain than they bargained for, but that front moves through relatively uh, quiet with a few showers possible and some high clouds rip on by Saturday night and Sunday morning. And then we'll see the high pressure ridge dominating our weather uh, for the upcoming days now, just uh, not over the weekend, but it's going to extend, I think, in throughout much of next week. And the rest of the U.S., there's not a big storm system taking place right now. Things are relatively quiet with the exception of some rain over 
Georgia, Tennessee, and causing some problems there. But for us, uh, we'll stay pretty high and dry. This storm starting to wind on down up in Maine now. They had some moderate rainfall there today, and uh, most of that nasty weather was over New York. And uh, Philadelphia has since moved on. This is just another vantage point, a different forecast model, but it uh, kind of uh, agrees with the European model that we'll see that scattered shower activity, just a few showers possible on into the afternoon and evening tomorrow. And now as far as the future cast goes, uh, we are going to see a big ridge of high pressure dominate the southeast United States from Sunday onward all the way till Friday of next week. And you'll get that as a temperature I showed you earlier. The heat is on. It's going to come back across the southern Plain states into Texas. It'll be up in the 90s. We'll get close to that here each and every afternoon, uh, beginning Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and into Thursday of next week with the cooler air and the trough and the jet stream hanging out west, the ridging over the southeast. Now, as far as the forecast goes, here's what's happening. Uh, for boaters, winds will be uh, pretty light. West winds at 10 knots. The winds may pick up a little bit over the weekend anywhere from 10 to 15 knots, but there should be uh, no advisories issued. Uh, the scattered shower possible in the afternoon for boaters tomorrow. A light chop on the bays and inland waters. And the water temperature, there it is, 78 degrees. It's getting close to that 80 degree mark. And as far as the extended forecast goes, here it is, 81 on Friday, 79, a little bit cooler. Should be another nice day on Saturday, maybe a little bit of cloudiness in the morning. And then we start off on a cool note. We start on a cool note on Sunday morning at 63, lots of sunshine anticipated uh, through the weekend and beyond. Temperatures approaching mid to upper 80s each and every day, right on in through Thursday of next week with no real threat of any rainfall around at all. And it looks as though we'll have um, a, a slight chance for showers tomorrow afternoon. Alan will be back with primetime headlines right after this. Once you get atrial fibrillation, you need to have a very close relationship with your primary doctor. Prevention is the whole ball game here, because once you have a stroke, you can't undo it. A year without stroke is a year that you can enjoy doing the things that you've worked all your life to finally get to do. You took care of yourself. You did what is necessary for you to be around one more year. And then next year, we'll celebrate one more year without a stroke. Maybe you can make retirement happen. After all, you made her college years happen. Watcha. Opening that education savings account when she was little. Spearheading a campus tour. And another, and another, and another, and another. Bam! Deciphering financial aid. She was like, what? And now she's like, yeah! you waste planning for college. Now get the tips you need to get on track at aceyourretirement.org. My life motto is keep moving. And as hard as it was when my husband passed away, I knew I had to keep doing what I love. Oops, coming. But I needed help, help with my insurance, and that's what the NAIC provides. They have resources to help you and your family make the best decision, and they'll help you to keep moving forward, just like me. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. And with a little help, I made it. Checking primetime headlines, Bill Cosby has been found guilty on all charges and now faces the possibility of spending the rest of his life in prison. ABC's Maggie Rooley has the latest outside the courthouse in Norristown, Pennsylvania. A guilty verdict for Bill Cosby. After an emotionally charged case that portrayed Cosby as both a serial rapist and a victim of the outrage generated by the Me Too movement, the jury of seven men and five women have come to their unanimous decision. 
Guilty, guilty, guilty! The 80-year-old comedian was found guilty on all three counts of aggravated indecent assault related to drugging and sexually assaulting Andrea Constant, a former Temple University employee at his Pennsylvania home in 2004. When the verdict was read, Cosby hung his head, later lashing out and cursing at the district attorney when he tried to have him sent straight to prison. We are, we Cosby's team says this the isn't the end. We don't think Mr. Cosby's guilty of anything, and the fight is not over. One big difference in this trial, jurors were allowed to hear from five additional Cosby accusers. The prosecution claiming they show Cosby had a predatory pattern. But in closing arguments, Cosby's defense team said all of the accusers fabricated their stories for money, fame, or attention, going on to blast the Me Too movement, describing it as mob mentality primarily based on emotion and anger. Today, some of those accusers who testified say they feel like the system is backing them up at last. We are vindicated, we are validated. This jury has shown that the Me Too, what the Me Too movement has saying is that women are worthy of being believed. We're told that when the verdict was read in court, many of the accusers burst out into tears of joy. Now Bill Cosby faces up to 30 years in prison, essentially a life sentence for the 80-year-old comedian. Maggie Ruley, ABC News, Norristown, Pennsylvania. Rear Admiral Ronnie Jackson has withdrawn his nomination as President Trump's pick to lead the Department of Veterans Affairs. Jackson's nomination was postponed due to allegations about his professional conduct. He issued the statement this morning saying in part, the allegations against me are completely false and fabricated. If they had any merit, I would not have been selected, promoted, and entrusted to serve in such a sensitive and important role as physician to three presidents over the past 12 years. We do, however, have a new Secretary of State, the Senate approving Mike Pompeo's nomination earlier today. The former the CIA director is now the nation's top diplomat. He takes the position at a time when several high-stakes negotiations are underway around the globe. Pompeo is expected to travel to Brussels for a NATO meeting tomorrow. And that's all the time we have for this evening. I'm Alan Cohn. Thanks for joining us. Have a good night.